Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. I am so glad to see you all here. My name is Anya Christianton. Nice to see you all. And today you're joining us for Elevating New Home Marketing, Virtual Tours, and Flyover Strategies. So during today's session, we're going to discuss best practices for showcasing your communities, specifically amenities in your communities and lifestyle, because that's why people buy new construction, not just for the home, but for the community. So we're going to talk a lot about some of the cool features, what's available. And then, of course, we're going to talk about virtual tours, best practices. Again, we're going to mention some new cool features that are available now. And we're going to wrap things up with some photo reel renderings to show you the latest and the greatest. Joining me today is Stephen Chan. Stephen is the president here at Anugo, and he leads our virtual team. So I'm going to give Steve a little bit of an introduction. So for nearly 20 years, Stephen has been a leader in new home digital uh, visualization space, having helped found a rendering house, which was Anugo in our infancy. Uh, before we changed our name to Anugo, many of you may still know us as Rendering House. Uh, he has built and led teams in creating marketing visualization, including photo reel and digital watercolor renderings, animations and videos, as well as virtual tours, interactive software, and augmented and virtual reality for hundreds of builders and architects. So Stephen has a lot of experience, and he's going to be bringing some of his team members on today to share some of these best practices. So Stephen, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Anya. Hey, you said a lot of great things about me, but definitely there are a lot of great people who work at Anugo. Next to me is Jeremy Nicholson. He is one of the big brains of our company. Uh, he does a lot of things behind the scenes. Extremely humble. He says he has a bad cough. He won't, he tried not to speak, but I'm gonna make him say something nice. Say hello. Hey guys. Great, great. So that's all, he's gonna, that's all I'm going to let him say, actually. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to talk about neighborhood flyovers. We've been doing neighborhood flyovers forever, it seems like. But with new technology, new ways of doing things, we're making improvements. So we're going to talk about some of the new things we're doing. I'm going to go over four areas, points of interest and context, how we can tell the story better. How we can give a little bit of context, a little breathing room to the community. We're going to emphasize a little bit about lifestyles and activities. We're going to give some examples. I'm going to give some examples also about storytelling, what we do, what we try to avoid doing. And the last thing is about topography. It's going to be very visually striking, but it's going to be awesome. We're going to talk about that too. So points of interest and context, I'm going to show you uh, a montage of clips. Before we introduce the community at the clubhouse or at the amenity, uh, is the monument. We're trying to preface, hey, where is this location? Where is this property? Uh, a greater context, points of interest. How do we go and introduce the buyer who may not be familiar with the location? So here's a project. Azalea Woods is out in Delaware. Uh, I'm familiar with this area only because my daughter spent the summer studying in University of Delaware at Lewis. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't know where this is. But this is 100 miles from D.C., Philadelphia, Baltimore. Uh, this is a great location. Rehoboth Beach, only 30 minutes away. It's a great place. And uh, we didn't include this, but Delaware, tax-free, man. It's crazy. I don't get it. And here's another example. This is Grand Dunes out in Myrtle Beach. Again, we try to tell people, hey, what's around it? Why come here? It's not just the community and what the amenities are, but what's around it. Mm -hmm. That's the selling point, right? Location, 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 right? Yeah. This is a great area of view. This is all fake. In a sense, it's 3D. Jeremy and others planted thousands of trees. I wish it's true in real world where we can plant trees and plant thousands of trees and really green, but it's it's virtual. Yeah, we virtually built thousands of trees. So we take our time in, in building the story up before we get into 
the clubhouse, we talk about the, street, the homes and the products. There's a lot of times we kind of talk about what's the feature, what's the privacy here for this uh, community. Uh, you can see that we add uh, stock videos to kind of enhance the transition. We'll talk a little bit about that too. Here's another project. This is out in Albuquerque. And you can see the buildings, but you can see the buildings in the background. We're trying to really create that bigger context. Yeah, more and more people are moving further away from their homes. I think NAR said it was 50 miles now versus 20 miles uh, before as people are moving more towards rural areas. It's important to showcase that, hey, what's around? Because you may not be familiar. And obviously, we know uh, all about cross-country moving nowadays. So it's important to set the stage. Uh, this last example is out here in around the Charlotte area. You can see the water towel we added. Is in 3D. We're not just trying to tell you those buildings. We're trying to put it right in the development of the community. There's another video where you can see we hire someone who looks just like that dude in the inside the van driving around. A lot of clients are actually picking up on that. They're really signing up to do the points of interest. It really helps them not have to build it up. And I think when you share the video in social media, sometimes they don't know the backdrop or the, the information about the community. So when they see a link, they go right into it. Uh, this helps them understand exactly uh, where they're at. Okay, we're gonna talk about activities, right? It's hard to have activities or life, a lifestyle without life. So we have to show life, which is humans. Humans typically in the past are used to show scale, right? Activities, the density, how, how busy it is, the, the vibes of the location, uh, the usability of the space. So as you can see in the old days, silhouette people are used. And the nice part of that is that it accentuates the architecture, the design, right? So people become, as a background, they're like extras. With better technology, we can actually show better people and we can communicate those things better. And here's a great example. So when we do animations, we have to have all these people animated, even a walking dog, right? We need to have the dog animated. Now I'm gonna show you just one specific example. Here is Pickleball USA. They're gonna build a new facility. And as you can see, this is probably from an architect. This was on Facebook and they're trying to show off, hey, what they're building. And they're using silhouette people, just like what we talked about. This is not a really great marketing video, but this would sort of give someone a great concept of what would be built. So if you're selling a neighborhood and this is your video to show it, it's probably not awesome, right? Not great. Here's a, an example of a pickleball court that we depicted. And this is from four years ago. So pickleball courts, pickleball is really popular now, but we actually did a community four years ago. And as you can see, all we did was we had players in ready position. They weren't moving. So it's kind of disappointing. We didn't do anything. We, and because they weren't looking great, we didn't do close-ups. We knew we had to make it better. So let's see some, see what we did here. We actually recorded our own pickleball animation and we had to use actors or players. We went to the pickleball courts, the local court right here. And we got a bunch of my friends and my kids' friends actually, and they came up and they played pickleball for us and we recorded them. So we, we take that recording, we actually have to go and create the motion right here. It's a lot of work, we have to fine tune it. And lo and behold, we can go and build a whole neighborhood and put in pickleball players into a scene. The what you just saw are doubles. Uh, we've been working on singles right now. And we're going to build in the doubles later. And so here's some close-ups of singles pickleball players. Yeah, this is so cool. So they're actually moving. So when we create all these animations of people, you know, we call it mocap, motion capture. This is probably the only jargon I'm going to use today. But the mocaps are really important. It really activates each sport or each activity. Without it, in the past, like I said, people just stood around. They stood around bocce, they stood around cornholes, 
and it doesn't tell the full story. All right, I'm going to talk about storytelling. We really spend the time to make human interaction nice. I think that's my best word. We can put people talking and interacting, and sometimes they look angry. They are talking over each other. So when we use these 3D characters, we have to make them all behave very nice to each other. It's not just putting people in. If we did that, they all act like random cars on the road. They just look like random people talking to each other or talking to a wall. The demographics is really important. We, we definitely have to ask. That is as important to me as the architectural plan, the site plan. That's the whole point of this is me seeing myself in this neighborhood. We try to really match up videos, our own videos with stock videos. So you have a lady here in a blue hat. And here we have a stock videos of a lady in a blue hat. So we're trying to really enhance that storytelling with some continuity. Soccer ball rolling. There's a bunch of people getting ready to play soccer ball. There's some riding a bike. And here the bicyclist rolling down. Again, some nice interactions. And hopefully the interaction is what draw people in. It resonates with people. There's, there's an emotional connection. Mm -hmm. Kids coming home from school, mom's waiting for them. That's the standard we go by, we live by. We don't charge more. There's not more. That's what we want to do. This is Weaver Homes. This is really interesting. They filmed it after it's built. And they approach it in a way which inspires me. So let's look at that. Their goal here is to show luxury living with low maintenance. And this is a 55 plus community. So they show really high end interiors. But even before that, they actually show this couple walking in. I mean, all that is great storytelling. They actually opened the door. You saw their face, you saw their reaction. And I love that. I think in the future, when we have better 3D characters, they'll be doing that. So much more engaging. I know uh, there's a realtor in my area who incorporates herself into her virtual tours, video tours. So instead of just showing the house, she opens the door and greets you. And then she takes you into the kitchen and tells you about some of the features in the kitchen. And then she says, oh, I'll hang out here. You guys go ahead. And then it, it takes you through the rest of the house on the house tour. And it just adds a little something extra. It's not something you see every single day. And the whole point of marketing is to really stand out from the rest of uh, your competition. And that's one way to do it. Yeah. And just, just right before this, they had people mowing the lawn, trimming the grass. And, and they're really visually demonstrating that community, that amenity really for the residents. And just the fact that they have this couple walking through the community, this level of intentionality is awesome. It's awesome for existing neighborhoods, but I think that's what we want to do with our virtual neighborhood videos that we want to create. So that's what's coming down the line in the future. Yeah. Topography, I want to talk about topography. Weaver Home happens to be in Western Pennsylvania. There's very little flat land. This is the project we're working on. It's called Lakeside Village. You can look at the site plan and it looks like, oh, that's pretty cool. There's a clubhouse, a pool, there's a big lake, and there's a bunch of homes, right? Okay, that's really awesome. You don't know what's happening in, in this property in terms of the topography. Here's Google Earth. We look at it and like, yeah, okay. I don't really know what's happening either. But once you look at Google Street View, you get to understand, wow, this is, this is not flat. And here's a clip from Weaver Homes. They sent this to us about three months ago in August, that's where they're at. And here's what we have to do. We have to actually build everything and put it into 3D. We have to put in, we have to go and digitally grade the roads and grade the lots and grade the driveways. Wow, this final looks amazing. And I mean, this is again, all about correct representation, right? If you represented a flat map to your clients and again, they're moving from across the country, they've never seen this. And then suddenly their backyard is sloped. They would be very unhappy, but this is, uh, this gives you really lifelike representation. The rolling hills. This looks beautiful. Yeah. And, and this just came hot off the press. This is, we just finished this last night and this is still in progress. We're not done, but I was going to show you And here we have more homes. They're still kind of coming together a little bit.
yeah, in the old days, this is a type of project we would avoid. And now, you know, with just better technology, easier ways of doing things, actually capture the photography. It's still a lot more work, just like real life. If this was flat, it'd be done in really half the time. Mm -hmm. Because it's not flat, you have to spend a lot of time actually building everything. All right, just a quick summary of everything we, we talked about. When we create neighbor flyover videos or community videos, our goal is really to create emotional connection with the audience. We, we used to pay attention to architecture and landscaping, and we still do for sure, of course, but we pay a lot more attention to the people. I think they're really telling the story. It's not the building or the, or the design, but it's the people in those settings and what they're they doing. Work together. Yeah, we actually care about the story and how it flows. It's not just taking a camera and take one long path driving through the road and then one long path walking through the rooms. We, it's really boring that way, actually. Uh, we use a lot of different cameras, a lot of paths, a lot of angles. And, and we start to rethink things. Instead of thinking, I have to appease the builder or the architect because I want to make it right. Really, I'm thinking, what does the audience need to see? The home buyers is the audience. And then my, the builders, they become the executive producer for this movie, right? I, I look to them for that assistance. I often ask, if you want to do a great job, show homes around the amenity. Get your team to budget that. Otherwise, the amenity and the pool looks like it sits in the woods or it sits in this grassy field or in a park. But in reality, homes are right there next to it and that tells a real story. Okay, I have any questions, anything for this section? No questions on this section. So let's move on to virtual tours. So now that we've seen a little bit about community marketing and what you can do to differentiate your amenities and the sell the lifestyle, let's look at the homes themselves because there's a lot of really cool new features that you can do and incorporate in a virtual tour of the homes. So let's take a look at that. Hi, everybody. I'm Jessica. I am the manager of virtual tours. Virtual tours can mean many different things to different people from either an animation or a slideshow. Here, virtual tours, we consider being able to walk th freely throughout a house, being able to choose your own path. For example, this is one of our virtual tours, the Charleston. As you view this house, we have a popular option that many clients select, and that is the on-off furniture package. You can see here that I am selecting the on-off furniture, so you can really see how that room will look with the furniture on and off. And that can help you decide what you actually want to put into it. We do offer some rooms, some furniture, either from West Elm or Restoration Hardware, but this really allows you to envision what you could put into the room yourself. This tour also has room option package. I feel that this option is very important because it allows the buyer to see within a 3D space what the options will actually look like. You can customize the house with specific options to see what fits your needs and then make a final decision on what you would like to upgrade or leave out. And that interactivity really drives engagement. I mean, we know that customers want to have interactive experience. So keeping them engaged and just the ability to visualize what the final home is going to look like is so important. I wish I had this when I was selling homes. You can overcome so many objections of I just can't see it by simply having this virtual tour. And you can use it just the same whether the client is doing it online by themselves or if they're in your model home and you're trying to show them how uh, this feature is going to look different from your model home. This is a great way to overcome those objections. Yes, definitely. It really allows you to see the space, especially with this one. You go from a bedroom and you click on the two-story great room ceiling and it turns into this amazing view that you get to see down into the great room and see that amazing fireplace. And you can turn that on and off. And it even shows up over here in the floor plan. We made that interactive so that as you turn on and off these options, you can see it change there and actually see where you are within the tour itself. So it's, it's a great feature to have. I really think that clients should go this route if they do have these options. 
it really allows, like you said, for that interactivity. Another upgrade that we have is the 3D space toggle options. This is brand new that we've added from the previous tour. This allows the toggle to be right within the 3D space. You may not know that the options are down in the menu option. So providing that 3D space button really allows the buyer to see that there's interactivity in the tour and they can click and change it within there and see the buttons pop up down at the bottom to see that they're actually changing something within the tour. And you can see here that I've changed the kitchen and you can come back around and see where the fireplace was. So that's something new that we're offering that I think is, is really valuable. There's another option that we offer as well, and it's the exterior walk around. This allows the buyer to see all around the house. It even allows to see the surrounding neighborhood if we have that information provided, but you can see the houses across the street. You can get a feel for what the neighborhood is going to be like. You can walk around and really connect with the house. Some people really fall in love with the house without even looking on the inside. Like I know if you're looking at pictures of houses and you're like, oh my gosh, I love that house. I, I want that house without even looking inside it. And, and I, I think people can resonate with looking on the outside and then being able to come into the house and view it that way as well. And, and it's some connection that you'll fully see the inside and outside that'll add the two together to really see its full potential. Yeah. Curb appeal, right? Yeah, definitely. Curb appeal is, is a real thing. We do have a new product and it's called the Virtual Design Center. We created this Virtual Design Center for Sedare Homes. They're a company out in the Midwest and they requested this product. And this particular product it will really set you apart. You're able to move around, unlike a static image, you can view a full 360. You can see the living room, dining room, and here you can customize the kitchen. You can even change the wall paints, the countertops. You've got the flooring and carpet and really get a feel and customize your own kitchen within a 3D space. This one allows you to move around um, in two different spots within the kitchen. So you can go and sit in front of the range and sink and really see what your options look like from different perspectives. Once you've designed your own kitchen and bath with this design center, you can save your selections and send them to anybody so that they can see your design. You can save it out and then people can view what you've selected and then say, hey, I want this. Right. Yeah, imagine the design appointment, right? We have to <laughs> through this and you just send us to your designer and say, hey, here's what I want. This is perfect. And exactly. we have kitchens and baths is at the end of the day what sells the homes. And to be able to customize this, whether you have packages that they can click on just a package and it upgrades, changes everything or individual selections like you see here. It's a great way to show off your homes. And again, adding that interactivity, you're getting people bought in, you're getting them hooked on this. And we know when they go through the option selection independently, they spend about 30% more on options. It's that Amazon effect of I'm selling myself instead of being sold by somebody else. Nobody wants to be sold, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. But yeah, you could you could spend hours in here selecting every different type of combination you can think of, being able to rotate around and see that tub and see the tile and then decide what kind of plumbing you want, what kind of lighting do you want, the countertops. So it's it's an endless amount of possibilities. It's really great that someone can sit here and then when they're all done, save it out and be like, hey, what do you think? And then your husband or, you know, whatever can give their feedback and be like, oh, I love it. Or pick something else. Or, you know, Not that the husband's else. feedback matters. <laughs> take it back anyway. uh, but I was also thinking for marketing people, you can go and design your most popular features and then, you know, record it as a video and push it out on social media and then test it against different combinations. Like I just came back from a tech home builder summit and they were talking about, 
what's trending and that the darker kitchens are bad and nobody really wants a white kitchen anymore. And kitchen with gray cabinets is demanding higher price. Same thing with the exterior. Gray exterior are the most popular and getting more money per sale. So if you have something, you know, t test it out and see what people are clicking on. And uh, you can keep updating it, keep changing it to really perfect your marketing and optimize your uh, dollar spent on that. Absolutely. One of the things I want to add is this rotatable view, this 360 view, multiple hotspots really allow, allows the buyer to examine their choices. Same thing for the bathroom. A lot of times when we only have one camera, we have to show the tub and the shower through the mirror. If you only have one view, that's all you're going to do. So it's really not very practical. If you want to do an interior designer, you have to show, you need to show multiple views. This really is a great add-on. All right. Our next item I'd like to talk about are notes. And notes is a new feature that we've added for basically reviewing. This is an example of what a customer would normally do when they give feedback on a tour. They'll take screenshots of the tour, write, paste images of whatever they'd like to change, add, delete. And this can be very time consuming. This is what our new feature is. It's called notes. Our tours will typically look like this when we send them out for a first review. I typically like to put as much in as possible before giving a first review to a client. This way they can see all of the furniture. They can see anything that they would like to change, either, you know, changing a light fixture color to changing the texture on the sofa. It's kind of like in the real world where we are the builders and they're the inspectors and they come in with their little sticky notes and they leave them all around the house. The blue kind of tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and this, it's very efficient. They don't have to worry about screenshotting uh, anything, sending over a PDF. That, and I get a notification right away in my email saying, hey, this is, this needs to change or, you know, I'd like to do this. So it's. It's a really innovative new, new step that we're stepping towards. And it's, it's a great feature that we have now. Next thing I have is Google analytics. This is another feature uh, that we offer. This provides the clients with actual data on how their tours are performing from what country their tour is being accessed from to how long people are on the tour to the number of clicks and what rooms people are specifically looking in. Unlike other companies, we offer this completely for free. This is part of our complete package. You can see here the average time engaged is two minutes and 31 seconds. Uh, two users have uh, used this tour within the last 30 minutes. 286 users, 264 new users. So it, it provides a lot of information on your tour that you would never have thought of. People from around the world is viewing this tour, Canada, Philippines, Australia even. So I, it's, it's something really nice to add, to dial in what you're looking for. So this is another exa great example of providing data to show which virtual tours are more popular, which floor plans are more popular, which features, like what are they looking at? This is some great, great information. You can actually, sit back and watch real time data come in. So when you, when they post the tour on Twitter, people get it and they can, you can see how it starts to populate, who's checking in, how many people use it, how long they stay, where they're from around the country, it gives them a little dot, which state, which city. And so it's really, really fun. If you really want to get a uh, granular and, and get to know how it's used, where it's used, who uses it. So we had the 3D interactive room options a great add-on, even if you just do the basic tour, having a few of those room options can really elevate your tour because normally we have the 2D interactive floor plans. Now you're able to see it, you know, from the 2D interactive floor plans to actually a 3D space and being able to walk around in those room options to get an even bigger feel of what it looks like. The exterior walk around where the exterior is the face of the house and the interior is just the soul of the house. We had the virtual design center where it's both best of both worlds. You can freely design as well as walk around. The notes making it easier for the entire builder team. 
you can have more than one person leave notes on the tour. It doesn't have to just be one person. It can be the entire team leaving notes on that one tour if pe other people want to chime in. And Google Analytics, more data, zero cost. Thank you so much, Jessica. I really appreciate it. I love what you guys are doing with the virtual tours. And every time I see new projects coming in, I'm always amazed by how much better it's getting and all the interactivity. So I think the, the more interactivity we can provide, the, the better engagement for the clients, the, the more sales for our builders. So thank you so much. And you guys shout out to Jessica. I'm sure everybody knows about the house that she built, the book. Jessica actually was the one who created the virtual tour of the house that she built, the book. And you can find that virtual tour on Zillow if you just uh, look up a house that she built and Jess was working to bring the characters to life. So thank you thank for you. that. I have Ken McSwain. How long have you been around with us, Ken? Since 2013. It's been a while. Hello to everybody who may know me. I'm usually behind the scenes. I'm both a production artist as well as an account manager. Today we're going to talk about photo real renderings. Basically, this is the bread and butter of what most builders really need to have at the very minimum. We basically have upgraded the software that we've used for the past few years. So a lot of the clients that we've had from years in the past, now see some of these photoreal renderings and they understand and the feeling of the dynamic of the lighting, the materials used, it, it all is much more appealing. So even though my side focuses more on a still image, it is still a 3D model and it is still meticulously cared for in terms of the how the material looks with the bricks versus the shadows, the way uh, the shadows hit the house. If it's a dusk shot, how the lighting really helps that house come alive. A rendering is a minimum ante in marketing, right? A, a rendering and a full plan. So people come to us for renderings, they people come to a new Google for renderings. And I wanna kind of briefly talk about the My Home app exterior color tool, which is an awesome tool. And a lot of uh, clients use that. So on the upper left corner, you're gonna see a rendering that's made by the color tool. And then in the lower right corner is something that Ken would do a photo wheel rendering. Here's an example where the color tube can produce these four plus really an infinite amount versions of color combinations uh, of this house. So if you're looking for a way to help buyers understand or explore colors, or if your team wants to do that, we have the right tool for you. But we also have the same clients. If you're a My Home App client right now, we also have them coming to us and saying, hey, I want some great, very, you know, subtle, nuanced visualization of the house. I want something for some hero shots. So we can do that. And we can even show it from different angles, right? Different lighting, even dusk renderings. Quick video of color tool. And it's just a way to make your exterior colors come to life. So instead of a static image, you have interactivity to it which is a great way again to engage your customers. And you can create unlimited number of combinations so your customers are choosing those colors and you don't have to order each color separately from a new go. That's the beauty of our tool. Yeah, all these different combinations, just use paper once. But going back, here's another example where we have a, a color to rendering and then we have a photo wheel rendering. We really pay attention to lighting, camera lens use, we add, just little subtleties like a flag, patio chairs, cushions on the chairs, planters, right? I, I kind of see it like, you know, we all as kids get school photos. You know, someone gets off the stool, someone sits in the stool, they take a photo, the next kid, next kid, next kid. Here we are like a craft, artisanal, small batch sort of visualizers. We really want to dress it up, pay attention. There isn't just one way of doing it. We challenge each other. I may go look at our stuff inside and say, hey, let's make this even better. How do we do that? So we really do pay attention. We may go and offer different examples or settings and give them choices. So a client can say, hey, I want a dusk rendering. I say, okay, here's, here's five choices of a rendering of your homes. Tell me which one you like. Uh, a lot of people like dusk or night. Those terms are very broad. It could mean many different things. In your mind, your dusk may be pink sky. Someone's dusk could be orange sky, blue right. sky. So as an account manager, I always have to 
really hone in with the customer and, and to me, service is the number one priority. And so whatever they would like to tweak so that once the project is actually built, it's modeled, it's landscaped, the scene is set, that's just the beginning. You know, the customer can still choose to have a different look, a different mood. That's why people are coming back to us in droves, actually. They're seeing the, not only the new look, but also additional service to where they can really have it their way and have it relatively quickly. Even in these five examples, there are three different camera angles. So for, as we're looking into this house, for example, this is a 360 degree view of the same house. So I made sure that the lighting is optimized for every single view as we rotate around so that you can really get a, a sense of the, the board and batting material versus the stone. You can see the full topography of the house. Uh, this is really great for custom builders, particularly who have uh, large houses and front porch furniture, I mean, multi-tier. There's a lot going on here, but uh, at least you have that option to, to build up a whole house from the outside. If you look at the upper left image where you see the silo garage doors, you wouldn't even know there's a basement in this house. No. Like you couldn't even tell. If people are trying to sell homes with just one rendering, they're, like, they're missing half the story. So even for a front and rear uh, type of package like this, and even though it's a smaller, simpler house, you can tell there's topography there, there's steps in the back. All these features are good to know. I see how much space I can expand it for a pool. And we can do all that. We can add pools, we can add spas, you name it, fire pits. We can even change the season. So it's not only can we change the sunlight, the angle, the camera lens, we can even add snow, make it fall. Oh, you guys, you know, Christmas time is coming up. The right. lights right. on the house, right? Make it magical. So, well, we have the, the coloring tool giving you uh, a certain view, right? But then you have a lot of flexibility. If you So if you're a builder, you have a lot of schemes or a lot of colors that you like people to have the option of seeing, then that's really the best functional tool. But if you're looking for that wow shot, that wow factor, then come to, to my side to do more of this photo reel style. We'll turn this around very quickly. I would say, you know, one to two week time frame to be fair. Sometimes it's just a few days. It just kind of depends on project flow. But if you're providing volume, for example, then uh, we'll find a way to get it done the time frame that you're looking for. And even if you need to rush it out, we can do that as well. If you are offering volume, then of course we'll do discounts for that. But my priority is once it's all built, surely there's going to be revisions. So I'm trying to knock these out as quickly as possible because now you're inching towards a deadline probably. So it's big priority for me to make sure that you reach that, that timeline and looking the way you want it to look. All right. Well, I think we are right on time. Yes, we're right at two o'clock here. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you so much to Stephen, Jeremy, Ken, and Jessica for taking us through this journey to show us how to sell our entire communities, not just the homes, by showing the amenities, showcasing the lifestyle, and providing that interactivity into the client experience, which we know drives further engagement. As I said, every time I see your projects, I'm always amazed by the quality and the, the, the new cutting edge stuff that you guys are constantly doing. So Thank you so much for that. So thank you so very much again for tuning in. We will see you all next time. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Anya.